Hey everybody, welcome to Hilltop Machine Works. Well hello everybody, it's Tom here and we are back in the shop for another project. It is a ugly rainy day, so uh, perfect to be in the shop and uh, you know, get something accomplished. But uh, first off I want to say uh, big thanks to all my new subscribers all my old subscribers have been hanging in there with me um, channels growing thanks to you guys I really appreciate it that's a you know a sincere thank you it keeps me motivated to uh, make the videos and you know come out here and make chips fly <laughs> so uh, what we got going on um, this will probably be I don't know a two or three part video series depending on how long the project takes but um, what I got here is a right angle mill attachment and um, what we need to do is we need to make an arbor support because what happens is you're able to turn a regular vertical mill into a horizontal mill when you take your arbor and of course it's going to go in like this well you need to support this end right here um, as you guys know, I have an Excello mill. It is the Canadian version of a bridge port. And of course the R8 taper doesn't want to lose here. <laughs> and um, there we go. And um, <clears throat> um, it's a little bit beefier than your standard uh, bridge port series one. Um, I'm not a bridge port aficionado, but I think the bridge port ones are like what, 1900 pounds. So my mill comes in at about 2,900 pounds, so it's, uh, you know, 1,000 pounds heavier, which means uh, the base is a little larger, the column's a little larger, you know, everything's a little bit bigger, including the quill. Um, so, uh, looking for a Excello specific right angle, um, milling attachment head and arbor support is you know like finding hen's teeth um, been looking on ebay for years never could find one so um, I picked up this particular head here one it was um, in good shape at a really good price because normally these things are around you know about 400 bucks and higher uh, the seller wanted like 200 and shipping wasn't bad too. I think flat rate for like 20 bucks. I, I was in it at a little over $200. So I thought that was a deal. Um, plus, I needed the two piece unit um, because they do make a one piece unit and I knew I wouldn't be able to chuck up a one piece unit. So I got the two piece unit since this is basically a collar that goes around your quill. And um, as you can see, it unbolts from this main body and that's the reason why I wanted it because my quill the diameter was, is larger than a bridge port so this wouldn't slide on as is um, I have already removed this put it in the uh, four jaw and bored it out so now this thing fits my quill since I needed a larger diameter so we're good on this part um, and of course you know after I bought this and did all that about a year later finally <laughs> one pops up on ebay except the uh seller wanted 650 bucks for it so hopefully you can see that support there in the uh picture i'm not sure if this is going to wash out how well you'll be able to see it but uh so that's what the excello brand looks like that's what we have to make um so that's what this project is about uh we got uh some hot roll plate here this is half inch thick this will be basically i guess the uh, the body that's going to be hanging down and then this piece of three quarter inch by uh two and a half hot rolled uh this will be bolting up um under the ram and then i got this big heavy piece here which is another uh, two and a half by one and a quarter and these will be the uh, tabs so to speak that will go on one on this end 
and then one on this end of course we're going to have to cut a dovetail and drill a couple holes and thread them and that's what was going to clamp down on the ramway so uh, that's what this project entails it's been on the uh, wish list for a while and uh, just haven't had a chance to get around to it you know how things are you know life happens uh, especially with the puppy down below let me uh, pick him up and we'll do a cameo appearance here he's finally actually calmed down uh, come here and say hi to everybody chaos yeah say look everybody I've grown uh, oh yeah I know puppy kisses I know so we're about uh, nine weeks out he's still a little terror so I'll say hey everybody <laughs> So, but he's doing pretty good for being a young puppy and being separated from his pack. So, can't complain. <laughs> I hear you. So, let's uh, get moved over to the mill and uh, show you the plan of attack. So, we got you over here at the mill to uh, help visualize what we got going on. So, that is the right head, a right angle milling attachment. You know, obviously. Uh, this is pretty versatile. You can run, you know, collets or, um, you know, a drill chuck. This is this is R8. And, of course, you can drill this way. You can, you know, run a slitting saw. You can cut that way. Or if you want to turn it into, like, a miniature K&T, which what we're going to do, uh, we're going to turn it into a horizontal cutting machine. Um, so let me get you up here. I'm going to go handheld. Let me get this knob out of the way. It is perfectly in our way and let me kill this light because it's probably washing it out and get you guys adjusted so okay so here's the bottom of the ram and as you can see you can't uh, basically mill out a dovetail and slide it on because they don't give you any room right here um, so basically what we got to do Looking at the one that Excello made and sells, or sold, since the company's out of business, is it goes directly up underneath this uh, ramway, and then of course the two tabs are gonna bolt on to the sides. So we're gonna go ahead and make this part first, you know, out of the uh, piece of uh, two and a half inch, three quarter thick hot rolled. And if we come over here, so I think if you uh, get this here, Hopefully the paper's not getting washed out with this extra light. Um, so you see this uh, recess or almost like a step down. So that is basically uh, helps to locate the center here. So it'll go right on the bottom of that ram and it'll be uh, you know, perfectly lined up every time. So I think what we'll do is we'll get those measurements and um, I think probably what I'll do, I'm just gonna mill a slot to the depth I want and then for some fun let's take it over and use a new genie shaper and we'll just uh, plow out that area right there so um, I gotta go get the uh, device on here and get it trammed up and then we'll uh, start some milling so just uh, with a rule where it looks like at uh, the bottom of the ram is about seven and three quarters so I'll figure uh, I'd break out my mic set show you this one I got off of eBay this is NSK which is made in Japan it's a good quality one so just let you guys know you don't always have to look for Starrett or Brown and Sharp there's a uh, you know plenty of other good quality uh, measuring tools out there and uh, you know if you're patient this is a uh, 6 to 12 obviously <laughs> um, you know, I paid $76 for this whole set, 14 bucks shipping, so a total of $90 for this uh, awesome mic set. So I'm going to get the uh, 7 to 8 anvils in and uh, check the calibration, and we'll go over there and do some measuring. So I got my measurements, and it's uh, 7 inches and 778 thousandths. It's kind of an odd number, but that is 20 mil, so seven inches and 20 millimeters and uh, I don't know if you hear that but it's pouring down rain on my roof so it's a little loud in here and I'm gonna add an extra inch and a quarter on each side for for a total of uh, two and a half inches 
So we're at 10.278, and I got it over here in a bandsaw. I'm just gonna go ahead and get get it cut up. And I got it about uh, 10 and a half inches, so it gives us room to uh, you know mill the sides and get everything cleaned up. Well, I got the piece cut. Got it in the uh, in the vise. So what we'll do is just go ahead and clean up the side, so we have some reference surfaces. Go ahead and get the measurement we need and uh, got that uh, three-quarter four flute tin coated end mill that I burned up uh, doing the uh, the griddle build so you know the bottom is toast but the sides are still sharp not a problem so we'll get the most use out of it we can and let's see what we're running Change the mind. I figured easier just to flip it around, to keep you guys where you're at. See, so you try to try to move you on the other side. So I'll make a couple more passes, I guess, on camera. I'll wrap the rest of it up off camera. what I want to do is run a half inch end mill down the center of this thing I don't know 
maybe 150, 200 thou. That way we've got a um, a trough to put the vertical plate in. And that way I know it'll be true and straight and not go anywhere because if we just try to stick it on top of here and you know eyeball it or scribe lines and try to hold it and then as soon as I do a weld tack you know the thing's gonna pull and go all you know squirrely on me. So I think if we <coughs> drill that slot that uh, you know it'll it'll hold it and we'll you know we'll be right with the world. So let me get that set up and I'll bring you guys back. Well a change of plans I think I guess that's what happens when projects like these so let me get a, a pointer here if you notice uh, on the original one that Excello made they've got the uh, vertical support all the way on the end of the uh, horizontal bracket and then they're running a gusset so I guess we'll make it kind of like their design I think the good thing is because it moves it back a little farther um, so you don't have to extend the ram as far so basically what we'll do is we'll just run an end mill right there on the end and if this was the vertical support it was going to fit right in there the only bad thing is you're only going to get one good weld on this side I guess I'll have to v-groove it a little bit on that side uh, of course the gusset will help sitting right here so that's what we're getting ready to do There you go, the slot is done. So imagine if this was the piece, he'd uh, fit right up there. So now we got basically a good register to weld off of. Um, for all you new machinists or curious what my numbers were, um, half inch four flute rough and end mill is cobalt. I was doing uh, 30 thou depth to cut and I was running just a little bit over two inches a minute with spray coolant so now um, I think what we're going to do you know deburr the edge um, flip it over and run an end mill basically we'll get our two um, outer measurements milled out and then um, we'll take it over to the shaper and we'll just chew out the, the center section. You know, I'm still a newbie with that shaper, so I feel better coming over here and using my DRO and getting my exact measurements and uh, trying to, uh, you know, work off one line and go to another line using uh, DTIs on the uh, shaper. So I think that's the plan. So let me uh, get this stuff cleaned up, flipped over, and we'll be back. Got the part turned around and uh, dikemed a couple lines just for my sanity. So basically, we're coming in a hundred, uh, one inch and uh, 250 thou. And that puts me there. Of course, my cutter is right on the line. I'm going to go ahead and just use that same uh, half inch end mill. So move in another 250. There goes my phone. And that puts us right there on the line. So 
sweet what we'll do is um <clears throat> It looks like the uh, side of that dovetail on the ram is about uh, 300 thou, but I'm just going to come in. I'm, yeah, I'm going to come in a depth of 250. We'll we'll just chew all this out at 250. So I'm going to make a uh, passes back and forth 250 here. We'll move over. I'll do 250 there, so that'll be my stop. And um, you know, like I said, we'll take this over to the shaper and we'll uh, cut all that out. So let me get set up. Okay, that slide is done. Uh, sorry, couldn't get much milling action, but it was really tight in here. I've got the the fucking screen here. I tried to have you sit right here, but by the time the table moved in, which means the you know the head and all the stuff moved right here, I just didn't have a good spot for you, especially with the cool mist shooting. So, anyways, it is done. I am going to uh, move over, and we'll get this one knocked out. So both slots are done. Um, I added like an extra thou and a half, so we have enough room to be able to slide it on there. So roughly about seven inches and 780 thou is what we wanted. And it looks like, unfortunately, the uh, end mill kind of walked a little bit. It's about 10 thou large. So you can see that we're like seven uh seven ninety. So ouch. So that's an extra five thou on each side. Little bit of wiggle room. I'm not too happy about that, but uh I guess worst case we can shim it. We'll see how it fits once we uh, get it all together. And uh with that I think we're gonna wrap that up for tonight and um uh, we'll pick this back up uh tomorrow or the next day. And uh, I gotta get a tool bit ready for the shaper. We'll get this thing set up and we'll just uh, use a shaper to chew all that out. Should be fun. See you guys then. <laughs>